There's so much to be said. We're gonna take our time. We're gonna change the world. Hello, this is Catherine Waddell of This Needs to Be Said TV, your host and facilitator for this program. This week, we're going to have an animation of This Needs to Be Said animation, something old, and I was a bit nervous about putting it out there before, but here goes. And how about last week? Did you enjoy Vincent K. Harris as he talked about personal finances with you? Well, sit tight, because this week he brings in a childhood favorite to show you how Easy it has been all along to manage your financial future. Think Monopoly. Now, for those of you who know me and know me well, you know that I have the ability to be an okay cook. However, it is not my favorite task. So during this episode, you're going to have the opportunity to meet nutrition coach and fitness chef, Miss Latanya Ellington, as she shows us how to prepare a delicious gourmet meal in just 30 minutes. And by the way, have you heard our bit about daily doses of weird news? Well, Darren Marlar is a comedian and he's going to bring some real news to you. It's just weird. So it's called Daily Dose of Weird News. There's so much in store for you during this episode of This Needs to Be Said TV. And we want to thank you for joining us. Honey, we need to talk. Oh boy, what is it now? It's about your mother. It seems like every time we have plans you have to go over and screw in a light bulb or hammer a nail. It's a problem that needs to be dealt with. Dear, it's my mom. She gets lonely. It's really not that big of a deal. We have lots of time to do stuff. C-E-E-J. That's another problem, you seem to think we have all this extra time. There are things in life you don't get to do over. For example our one year anniversary. You know I love you, right? Where is this going? It's my mom and I should not have to choose. Leave and cleave Jay, leave and cleave. Huh? What? Are you really asking me not to help my mother? You have got to be kidding me. Are we really going here? What I am asking you to do is to balance your light bulb screwing for your mom and celebrating our special occasions. You acted as if our anniversary never happened. Linda, don't do this. Every day I do for you. My mom calls once in a while. It is really not a big deal. Let's drop it. Hi, Latani Ellington here with Fit for the Kingdom. Today I want to share with you three commandments to food combining. Your body is infinitely wise and it has the natural inborn instinct towards health. There are certain health principles that you can follow which will allow your body to do what it does best and that is to maintain an equilibrium of health because you are automatically healthy and sick by default. So the first principle or commandment that I want to share with you is this, and we've talked about it before. Do not eat protein and starchy carbs together because they neutralize each other. They require two different types of digestive environments to break down. Okay. The second one is, and I know that you're going to be like, Latanya, don't, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that, but I'm going to tell it because I have to share this with you. <laughs> Do not eat fruit and vegetables together. I know. That Fuji apple salad that you typically have a Panera bread. I know. 
<laughs> the the mandarin orange salad that you have i know i know i know i'm just kind of throwing it all off right now um but what i need for you to understand is that um fruits are either a single or a double sugar and with starches is a triple sugar and what happens is is that with fruit it mechanically breaks down in the stomach but chemically they don't break down until they reach the third or the fourth stage of the digestive process and um, or the digestive system which are in your small intestines and starches are broken down in three different stages starting in you know starting in your mouth and we talked about that last time as well so even when it comes to desserts you want to make sure now I'm not saying not to have desserts even when it comes to desserts you want to wait you know a few hours to have it I'm not saying that you can't have it but just wait you know that's discipline just wait a little bit and then have your dessert and I, I, I promise you your digestive system is gonna thank you for it and the third commandment that I want to share with you and I know <laughs> this is gonna be hard for you but I know that um, because you care about your health and you want to do what is right and allow that equilibrium of health to take place in your body that you know that you will apply it how about that um, but eat melons alone yes or your tummy 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 it will moan <laughs> so when it comes to your watermelons um, eat your watermelon alone when it comes to your honeydew that's a melon eat it alone when it comes to cantaloupe that's a melon eat the cantaloupe alone but you can put some chia seeds on it see I helped you out <laughs> but anyway if you follow these these three commandments I promise you um, you do not you know have to uh, have digestive issues and that's what it's all uh, all about because um, you know health begins in the gut so I hope that this was helpful um, I would love your feedback love it love it love it love it and let's have a discussion about it because I would love to teach you more guys, Latanya Ellington here with Fit for the Kingdom and um, I have not made a cooking video in a while and I am just like, you know what, I'm going to make one today. <laughs> so um, today I am going to make roasted split chicken breast. So I have my chicken here and I'm also going to make a green bean salad. I got these green beans from the farmer's market, I got some red onions, lemon, tomatoes and my olive oil okay now I want to talk to you divas who don't like to cook <clears throat> you gotta set the atmosphere I have some smooth jazz playing okay typically when I'm cooking I'll either listen, listen to some music or I'll listen to a teaching or something I have some water here <laughs> And you see, I have it all nicely dressed with some cucumbers in there, lemon, and some mint. And I also have um, sparkling water in here as well. You have to set the atmosphere. So, I have um, here, I have um, cloves in here, as well as allspice, some garlic, some uh, red pepper, smoked paprika. Um, I have heavenly seasonings, honey, butter, um, seasoning in here as well and I have allspice as well as onion powder and I put 
um, a couple of pinches of brown sugar in here as well because this is going to be my rub. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to sear these up. I'm going to show you what it looks like or how I sear. And um, we'll be back. Okay, so I am about to sear my chicken. And even though I'm roasting it, I'm going to put it in my new wave oven. Even though I am roasting it, I still want to sear it to, to give it a nice crust. So I have my trusted precision induction cooktop. Um, I love this thing. You guys know how much I love it. Um, with my green beans, like I said, it's only going to take me about four minutes to cook that up. I'm going to show you that as well. So I'm going to put my water in here. I have my the temperature set on 375. Put the water in here. Now, um, when it comes to cooking green beans, um, don't kill a bean. Don't kill it. <laughs> and what I mean by that is this. Don't, you, you don't want your green beans to be soggy. You don't want your vegetables to be soggy. You still want them to have a nice crunch to it. have a nice crunch to them. Okay? But this meal literally took 30 minutes. 30 minute meal. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. In his weekly address, President Obama said a person's zip code shouldn't decide their destiny. Uh, well, it doesn't, Mr. Obama. Uh, that's why we have U-Haul. Around 880 tons of smuggled frozen meat have been seized by Chinese authorities, including one batch dating from the 1970s. The meat was bound for restaurants, retailers, and supermarkets. Too bad, too, I mean, because aged cheese and wine, that's always more valuable. I mean, imagine what a 40-year-old cheeseburger might have been worth. The Northern California owners of a nudist colony are accused of illegally diverting water from a nearby creek. I assume it was not for laundry. Oh, yes, 
After spending 14 hours on top of a nine-story high crane at a construction site, a homeless man in San Jose was coaxed down from the cab that he was perched in after he was promised a burrito. Now, maybe that's the solution to all of the you know out of control violence in America. You know, you know we're just not offering up enough free Mexican food. Hillary Clinton defended her cooperation with investigators, saying, I turned over everything that I could imagine. The rest of it she deleted while thinking, I can't imagine turning that over. 21-year-old Loxahatchee, Florida resident Tyler Butler has been arrested on charges of arson and using an explosive device after cops say he tried to prevent a bank from selling his foreclosed home by attempting to blow up the place with a bowling ball bomb. The bomb included a gunpowder-filled center and a rope fuse, which he apparently bought from Acme Explosives Company, located in Toonland. Democrat Senate hopeful Alan Grayson said, Democrats are willing to crawl over hot coals naked to vote for me. Yeah, maybe so, but only if they don't have to show a photo ID. In Mexico, a Donald Trump piñata is currently a pretty popular item. The idea of hitting the Donald with a stick is so appealing that Hillary has ordered 12 of them. That's your Daily Dose of Weird News. I'm Darren Marlar. You can get more weird news at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. Hello, this is Vincent K. Harris, and I find it an honor to be able to uh, teach something that I'm very, very passionate about, and that is business and personal finances. Many of you have seen me travel this great country and speak at different business conferences, universities, and corporations about the topic, or you may have seen me on social media at Vince Inspires. Well, I am here to help you guys, at least in my own small way, 
with business and personal finances specifically on how it is that I think, how it is that I solve problems, and how it is that I look at finances in general. I hope you guys enjoy. Monopoly is not just a game. It's actually the blueprint as to how your finances should be handled. Here are some of the lessons I've learned from the great game of Monopoly. As a child, you knew the secrets to managing money. And the question I have for you is, why did you grow up and just forget all about the secrets? Why didn't you apply them to real life? Well, just in case you forgot, here's a refresher as far as what the Game of Monopoly taught all of us about managing money the right way. The first lesson is that your salary should be your initial source of income from pass and go, but certainly not your permanent source of income. When you began playing Monopoly, you understood that initially, all of your money came from your salary or pass and go, right? However, you also knew as you became more experienced, the goal was to find better or more efficient ways of acquiring money from the purchase of assets. Speaking of assets, another cool thing that we learned from the game of Monopoly as it relates to managing money is that we knew that our salary was meant to purchase assets and our assets then paid for our bills or our liabilities. As in life, Monopoly required us to pay necessary living expenses. Think about it, we had to pay rent, we had to pay mortgages, we even had to pay income taxes. Yet, your primary purpose for collecting your salary was to purchase assets because you always knew the assets would pay you more than your salary. Again, why do we grow up and forget all of these wonderful lessons the game of Monopoly taught us? Here's another cool one. You were required in the game of Monopoly to manage your assets so that you can respond to emergencies as well as take advantage of opportunities. Think about it. As you played Monopoly, you knew there were going to be times where other players would get themselves into financial trouble, requiring the liquidation of their assets at great prices. You also knew there would be times unexpected expenses would require you to pay substantial amounts of money. This is the key. Regardless of the circumstances, you knew or needed to have a surplus of money or a strong stream of cash flow to avoid the potential of bankruptcy or to seize opportunities created by others because of their mismanagement of their salary as well as asset. Here's one of my favorites and that is to plan for the unexpected. Remember, you knew in the game of Monopoly, eventually you were going to land on someone else's property or you were going to pull a chance or community chess card they would say something like this. Um, you have to pay some type of tax or um, not that the Christmas firm or two would actually the opposite. You should pay each player 50 or 400 bucks. Either way, you plan for that based upon your assets and not your salary, okay? Now, the cool thing about planning for the unexpected, when you make that plan, nothing now is ever unexpected. Here's something that you have to remember or keep in mind about your salary that would, I believe, uh, push you to want to do better with your salary, regardless of the amount of money you're making right now. And that is, salaries are limited. Therefore, they limit what it is that you can personally do in life. So here's a lesson from Monopoly as it relates to your salary. Regardless of how long you play Monopoly or how long it took you to go around the board, whether it took you five rolls, that's when you roll 12 each time, or if it took you 16 rolls, that's if you roll two every time, your salary for passing go was limited $200. The same can be said in real life. Your salary is limited to what your employer feels you are worth. Without properly managing your salary, it limits the things you can do in life. And I simply believe there are no limits for the life that God has given you as an individual. Here's the final cool thing about the game of Monopoly. Think about it. As the game went on, you still collected the $200. However, the $200 or the salary became less and less important. Why? Throughout the game of Monopoly, you continue to receive that $200 salary, but during that same time frame, you are acquiring assets. So you became less and less dependent upon that particular salary. The question I have for you right now is simply this. Are you just as dependent upon your salary as you were when you first began working? Think about over the years how many raises you've received. Are you just as dependent upon those raises right now? Many times here in America, we don't have a money problem where, hey, you know what, if I only made more money, I can do X, Y, and Z. No, what I found is that many times we simply have a management problem. You deserve better. And I believe if you properly manage your financial or your personal finances, just as a highly successful business does, you can turn everything around for the better. 
to this edition of This Needs to Be Said. There is an elephant in the room. Let's talk about it. This is part two of I Ziggy Promotions, but there's so much more to these young men. So the other half of the, one of the thirds, are here to talk about a new venture. So welcome to the show. Well, everybody should know me. I'm I Ziggy. You're I Ziggy? Yeah, I'm I Ziggy. Okay. <laughs> I'm just playing. It's, it's all broken up in three parts. You know, we all just take our part in it. So. Well, I want you, first of all, I want to start at the end first. I'm excited. I want to know about this new adventure. Oh, my new adventure? Adventure, adventure. Well, yes. our new adventure is called Sold Out. It's for, it's like collecting shoes and clothes for those who need it. But it's not for like, just for one certain area. It's, it's like all countries to just like get clothes for but children. But why? Because I mean, there's plenty why? of people doing that. But why, why? did you start because, doing Because when you see most companies they only go for like Africa or just the people in that country. We want to get all countries involved. Now your mom told me something. You're gonna make me pull the story out of you. Story. Your mom told me about you. You said you were talking about how you can wear name brand shoes and you didn't know why. You know. Yeah. I, why? You, you want me to tell you the whole thing? Your mom told me. Yeah. <laughs> like, what she was saying, you were look, you were gonna donate your Jordans. Yeah, that's a, that, uh, you sure? Is that what, what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. I'll, do, I'll donate some shoes because kids really need it these days, and like shoes for me come real fast because I mm -hmm. trade and sell shoes anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's like. So you're not gonna just give any shoe. You're gonna give some really nice ones. Yeah, some really nice ones. I'll give. Well, good. I'm excited. And she said you came up with that by yourself. Well, we was talking about shoe things, and I was like, why don't we just do like shoe things for like kids? like people who need it and all that and she was like really i was like yeah and then we was like coming up with the name and i was like sold out let's just do that because nobody really has it like well so when are you doing your first event when is this kicking off or have i missed it mm, we haven't really planned that yet so we was like it's getting in that the works oh i like being at the very beginning <laughs> of something so we have to have you come back and talk some more about that yeah. i was excited simply because again you guys your brother's 19 and three quarters how old are you i'm 16 i just 16 and a half 16 no, and I, one fourth. i just turned 16 in may so it's like oh you like 16 and one fourth yeah. okay all right <laughs> so i just turned 16 I'm, I'm new to it okay but you guys are always thinking of others now some things have happened with you all to start the fight against childhood obesity and you got an official day here, signed by our mayor, Anthony Fox, which I was excited about that when your mom sent me I that information. Too. I was like, they got a day? I want a day. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, but we, we just need a Catherine Day or something. So y'all have to tell me about that later. Yeah. But you have an official day because you guys did Let's Move in After School. Your brother gave, gave us a little bit of information on that, but what it was the process? How did you guys get involved with Let's Move in After School? How did we get involved? Well, How did that start? How did that start? Well, we just wanted to get kids to dance. Like, because I like to dance, he likes to dance. Mm -hmm. So we was like, let's do something that most kids just don't want to work out and do. So you something to, fun to lose yeah. weight. Something I need to, to just, come, I need to come that. Let's something move that'll just get them loose, you know. Okay. Loosen them bones. Do y'all play old school? Yeah, we, we, we can play anything. But you don't dance. already, but you'll do that for the older people mm -hmm. if we come. I mean, yeah. You, know. you got you to gotta look out for me. You got to look out for me. I look out for you. Okay. I don't want to, I want my heart moving too fast. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Y'all got first aid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you guys get into the after school programs? How do, I, how do we get into the after mm -hmm. school programs? Well, um, like we just started communicating and talking to them. Like, it's like we had this program that teaches kids and it was like, kids programs they they like needed fit schedules so mm -hmm. we just came through we wanted to like get them jumping running so they welcomed dancing. your activity yeah. now what was one of the rewards or what is the i guess the big reward because every week you can't be there um live promoting um or live djing excuse me so what was the the reward when um the kids did the routine um, I think it was about after, like, when the class ended, we had, like, a big, like, party for them, mm -hmm. and we had, like, water, water. Oh, yeah. The water company come through. You're not saying it right. Water. No, -uh, it's like, what the? It was <laughs> <laughs> like, water. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but we had them come through. We had, like, 
and them dancing to the let's move move your body flash dance mm -hmm. and then like we just gave them water and like and live had, djing too right yeah, live djing and we had like stand set up to where the kids could color and all that you guys did one over i think at one of the ymcas off of Beatty Sport road too yeah we did that uh, i think i learned how to do the wobble <laughs> that day <laughs> but uh, you guys are doing a lot of great things in the community so now, with all the work that you were doing, how, how much are you and your brother saving towards college? How's that working? Saving towards college? How's that working out? Uh, we're still you know, <laughs> in the works of gaining. Okay. Like, I'm in the works of gaining. But you like, still have a little more time, right? Yeah, yeah, a little bit more time, but it's not, not that much time. I still got to get on my grind mm -hmm. and work for it. Now, you guys have already started your own businesses, so college is something that's still very mm -hmm. important to you. Yeah, well, I can slide mine through college, you know. It'll also help with my tuition. I love that. I love that. So we have Ziggy Promotions. We have Sold Out. Am I missing any other businesses? Because, you know, uh, I, I have to get you guys. Y'all on skates. Well, you just missed Let's Move. So oh, already. that's right. Let's Move and Let's After move, School. Uh, Nothing uh, you want to tell me? You know I want to know. Um, no, not spilling the beans. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you for sharing with me, being one of the first people to know about Sold Out. And when, what is your official date? What is the Let's Move date on the, the calendar? Your official day? Um, oh, you don't know? We need to get a, a phone a friend, ask somebody in the audience? Yeah, I remember it. What's your April. official date? I think it's April 4th. April 4th? April 4th. All right. Well, we'll verify that so I can post that when we when we do this show okay. so that everybody will know. I mean, I think it's a big deal because it came on a scroll and it's a proclamation. And this day, it needed horns and everything. Yeah. I'm not good at you, memorizing stuff. That's so all right. Like, well, you have to know because yeah, what are you going to do on the first year of, to celebrate that day? I'm, I'm going to try to, like, get all the kids that we taught or something mm -hmm. we have like one big block party and we just i'll remind you of the date because i want to be there okay and you have to throw in the old school f song yeah for i'm me. throwing the old school for you don't yeah. make it real old okay i'm not <laughs> <laughs> probably going to throw the cha-cha slide and the lecture slide for you whoa i'm finna end right there you was wrong for that <laughs> <laughs> i can do a cuban shuffle or something <laughs> well this wraps up this edition of this needs to be said there is an elephant in the room let's talk about it Welcome to this edition of This Needs to Be Said. There is an elephant in the room. Today we're going to talk about a very serious topic, which is identity theft. But not just regular identity theft. We're going to talk about identity theft with children. And so we have a representative here with Legal Shield, Mrs. Mason, who's going to open our eyes to what's out there. A lot of times we just miss some things. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And uh, I'm really excited to share this because a lot of attention has not been paid to children under 18 mm. because actually they're not supposed to have a credit file, right? Right. Well, I, I just want to share one recent story that was on ABC News. Uh, there was a young lady who had applied, she had graduated, had applied for a credit card and got denied. Well, she didn't think anything of it, so when she got to college, she applied for a student credit card and that was denied as well. So she decided to do a little digging and found out that she was $1.9 million in debt. How can that be? I can't pay due power like $100 late. So Absolutely. I, a million? What had wow. happened when they did a little digging, she, she and her family did a little digging and discovered that somebody had opened up 42 accounts and they were all in default. Anywhere wow. from cars to boats to houses, these were all in her name. How was that possible? Because well, she, she was a youth. Absolutely. And you know what else they found out? That file had been active since she was nine years old. Uh, what the wow. identity thieves have found, since we are getting to be a little bit more educated, uh, the consumers getting to be more educated, what uh, was discovered was that 
they're going to children because who looks at a child's credit file? Mm -hmm. What parent looks at a child's credit file? Mm -hmm. They just don't do it. And but wouldn't the business look at the credit file? Well, they've got it all set up as if, as if it were you, as wow. an adult. Wow. And, and another thing is, what they found is, there is a software out there that Social Security uses, or did use, I hope they don't use anymore. Uh, but the thieves are so educated, that software spits out Social Security numbers. And they just wait for somebody to apply for that number. Well, the thieves get that number first. So when it comes to be assigned by Social Security, what happens is that file has already been used, but nobody knows it. One mother found out when her child was five months old. $750,000 in debt. That's crazy. Which also included a house and a car. That is crazy. Absolutely, absolutely. So what a parent wants to know is what can I do? Right. Actually, I'll tell you what a judge once told someone. Die. Die. Wow. That's how hard it is to get your Social Security number legally changed. And the best thing a parent can do is have that child's um, credit file monitored. Well, monitoring it, what they say, frequently, what would you consider frequently? Well, for right now, once a year. Let me ask you something. If your house caught on fire, would you want to find out about it once a year or right away? Right away. Same thing here. But you why want it, would that be something we would even have to think about? Our children's credit report? It's, it's the society. Wow. And you don't want your child ending up like this young woman did. She was going into the university experiencing being, quote, unquote, an adult. And now she's in all this debt. She says she can probably never, at least right now, rent an apartment, rent a car, get credit that is for crazy. anything. That's why we have to be so diligent about it. And that's what we do at Legal Shield. We provide what is called an identity theft shield. And a part of that identity theft shield is for minors. And it's called Safeguard for Minors. Wow, so you don't just need an ID card with your child's picture on it. You need, so you need to treat them as if they're already an adult, pull their credit report. Absolutely. And, and, and um, Safeguard for Minors will do that up until they turn 18 when they can get a own, their own full-fledged identity theft shield. So what does this young lady, how, how does she even begin the process of reversing? Because, I mean, it's obvious it wasn't her. It's so how does, she, how does she, you know, get that off of her? It's going to cost her hours and time. Remember I told you she's going to university. Right. It's going to cost her parents dollars to hire someone, private investigators, um, FBI agents. <laughs> it, it's serious because you don't know where it's coming from. Now, they've honed in and found, uh, like they said, the 42 accounts. But tracking them down, Was that who from did one it? person? No. no so but, multiple people. Yes. Multiple people Absolutely. use this same Social Security number of this child. Absolutely. And the same thing can I happen can't. to you. <laughs> Maybe not mine. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm glad, you said, I'm glad you said that. Because most of us think of identity theft as somebody stealing our credit. Mm. That's the least of your worry because you can get new credit. But you can't get a new you. Mm -hmm. One lady had three children. She had, they're all in school now, and she wanted to get a job, so she applied at Target. And she said she waited and waited and didn't hear from them, so she did the diligent thing. She called. And they said, well, uh, it looks like you already work here in 37 positions. In 37 positions? Yes. Oh, she's a utility player. If she was do, playing do you know, baseball, you know, right? Do you know what happened? Off the top of your head, what do you think happened? Well, I mean, we were just talking about stolen Social Security numbers. 
So and somebody they, went and got a job? 37 people in that one corporation got jobs under her social security number. Now, so, so what did that look like at the end of the year for tax time? Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> I brought that up. <laughs> if she didn't do it and they worked in her social security number, who is IRS coming after for the taxes? Were well, they coming after her? Absolutely. So she's made a lot, a lot of money working Absolutely. 37 positions. Absolutely. A lot of money she doesn't have and never did. And HR didn't catch it? No. How did they catch hers, but they didn't catch the other 37 people with that same social security number? Hello? Yeah, I, have a, I always it, wonder. It's just some, some people can just get away with stuff. What do you think happens if um, social security is collected, but not, you, you know, if they deduct for social security and then nobody ever claims it? Mm. It sits where? Just there. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. But how so, is it that some people get away with this stuff? A lot of people get away with it. And, and you know, the, the millions that are reported, thousands that are reported, the police department, first of all, they're not equipped to handle it. They're just not equipped to handle it. So what do you do? you get the best protection you can. Um, Crow Background America is responsible for protecting you as an identity theft shield client and safeguard for minors. Well, normally when you have a uh, identity theft situation, you also may have a criminal situation. So if you have that criminal situation, you need to, gonna have, need to be able to have access to legal counsel. So that's how Crow Worldwide was connected with Legal Shield so that you have the best in both worlds. And what that allows them to do is something that you really need to be, have done, like that young lady and her family. They're going to have to go different places to find out what happened. When you have Crow, wow. they, ha they have private investigators agents to work on your behalf. All you do is sign a limited power of attorney. So you have to have insurance for everything? Every single thing. Even, even insurance to make sure the insurance works. That is crazy. That <laughs> is crazy. Absolutely. We got to check the person that's checking the other person. Absolutely. Well, who's Absolutely. watching that person? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. My goodness. Well, it is something I have never even thought about. And I have an 11-year-old. And I didn't check it with my older children. They're adults now, but that's not something that I've ever, I, I, I don't know. How do you get a light bill in a kid's name? How do you get a house? And I've never understood that. I just, I don't know. I, I don't know people that can get away with that stuff, but it keeps happening. They do it. And, and you know, a lot of times it's family. That's what I was going to ask you. A lot of times it's family, but the, the real identity theft uh, thieves, they're more sophisticated now, and they're doing a lot of craziness. They go online and hack into uh, your computer, and they'll look for your tax return, listing your children's names and Social Security numbers. Good grief. Do you think if somebody has that much time to do wrong, they would spend that much time doing Absolutely. right? That is crazy. And you would stay up all night trying to do things your, by yourself to, to, to protect your child. So it's, it's um, best to have someone doing that for you so you can have peace of mind. My goodness. Well, thank you so much for sharing this information. And for those of you at home, those are some things that you need to consider. Your children need to be protected. You need to be protected. And your, it's your identity. I mean, you're just going along with life, and you're doing what you believe to be the right things to do, only to learn when you go and apply for something, maybe you've been saving for something major, and now you can't even do it because somebody's already stole your identity and did whatever they wanted to. So this concludes this edition of This Needs to Be Said, and that was a huge elephant in the room. Send a letter, just a letter, just a letter will do. Won't you send a letter? 
girl, girl. You've been gone for a long, long time. And I thought about you all the loneliness time. And I'm so sorry for the things I said. You know, girl, I must have been crazy going out of my head. Listen, deep down inside, I still love you. So won't you, won't you send a letter, just a letter. Just a letter will do. Who won't you send a letter, girl, girl? Hey, the postman, if you see my baby, tell about me that I love her. Hey there, postman, if you see my baby, tell about me that I miss her and won't she please, baby, send a letter, just a letter. Just a letter will do. Won't you send a letter, girl, girl? Send a letter, just a letter. Just a letter will do. Won't you send a letter, girl, girl? Just a letter, just a letter will do. Ooh, 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 Welcome to this edition of This Needs to Be Said. There is an elephant in the room. Let's talk about it. We are joined today by Shaquana Lene of Legacy Financial Solutions. Today we're going to get into some more talk about your credit, but we're going to look at judgments. We're going to look at foreclosures, and we're also going to look at bankruptcies. So welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> hey. Now, you got us started with the talk about just beginning to understand our credit report. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's some other things that show up on our credit report, like judgments. Mm -hmm bankruptcies, mm -hmm. foreclosures. Mm -hmm. Let's get into those because does the seven year rule apply to those? How do you get those off? Do you have to wait? I want to know real fast. Every situation <laughs> depends. Every situation, like I said, it really depends on the local statutes, laws, even though bankruptcies and stuff has, they have quite a bit more up under what we call that umbrella, but still pretty much for the most part, most people only go back two years on bankruptcies. Once again, it hits that dead file status. You know, even mm -hmm. though they don't get gravy off of that, pretty much within two years, I mean, it's, it's a done deal. And it's funny, but people are more prone to give more credit to a person that filed bankruptcy than they are a person with no credit. That's crazy. That's another show. Uh-huh. <laughs> foreclosures. It, foreclosures is pretty much the same thing. Foreclosures and bankruptcies are, are pretty much within that two-year thing. And, yes, they can come off. It, it's not a forever, ever. Wow. If, if anything in the bankruptcy, even all the way down to the docket number or the case number, was reported long, wrong, because I've had that happen before, by law, it has to be removed that they have to take it off because that's wrong information. If you're reporting a wrong case file and I'm a creditor and I want to look into that information and you're telling me that the bankruptcy was 300000 and the case file number is telling me it was a million, it can really, you know, mess some things up for me. 
So bankruptcy, it's not hard. It's about dealing with the professional that understands the industry, being realistic, because it is, it's a lot of loopholes out there. That's why you have so many people that can file bankruptcy today and tomorrow they get everything brand new. And then even with foreclosure, you know, there are loopholes. And then a lot of the lenders, they actually, some of them actually report information before you are even notified. So it's already running on your credit and you're wow. not even foreclosed yet. And that's been another big thing. But as far as like the liens and the judgments and things, those are some of the easiest things because a lot of times that information is not correct either. So wow. you have the wrong information being reported. So that one is a matter of the professional dealing with the local courthouses and everything else bringing resolve to that. But what if the information is correct, if the but it's over two years old for the bankruptcy? If it's over two years for the bankruptcy, for one, it's not really a sore thumb on your credit if you've been doing what you agree to with the courts. People will give you a second chance. As long as your history is good within that two years, it will not hurt you. But if you've had one late payment or you've defaulted anything, you may as, you know, basically you shot yourself in the foot. Okay. Foreclosures, some lenders are even being forgiven with a year with this economy. It, wow. it's, it, it, a year later, I have clients that are actually buying new homes. Mm -hmm. So it all depends because a lot of the banks won't work with the hardships. But in foreclosures and bankruptcies, people are more willing to listen be behind the story of the snapshot more than so the credit part. Okay. So it, it, it's not hard. It's just a matter of understanding the laws, knowing the situation, knowing how things are supposed to be reported, verifying with the bureaus that everything was in right standing with the laws, and then dealing with the situation. As such. Now, what about judgments? Judgments, that's a local. That would be something that would be handled locally, and that's not hard. That will fall up under with the liens and the judgments. That's not hard either because sometimes I've had people that actually have landlords that um, place judgments and the tenant had, had no idea. And even if, say, it was a judgment, you can, a lot of times, you can settle out for pennies on the dollar and demand that they remove it. Never settle out without demanding that they take it off of your credit. Absolutely. Now, we're reading our credit report. We're mm -hmm. getting educated here. We know we're beginning to learn the difference between, you know, what can stay, what can't stay, mm -hmm. how stuff should be reported. However, I don't do this for a living. <laughs> should I try to do this on my own? And if yes, why? And if no, why? I say it's up to the individual. Um, a lot of times I say no because people go in and say, well, I can write letters and I can do this myself. It's more than just writing letters. It's about understanding laws. It's about understanding your rights. It's about knowing how things are supposed to be reported. Were you notified? It's a lot of technical difficulties that people don't understand, and it's very time sensitive. It's actually a 30-day mark to the dollar to the post mark. So if you drop that ball one time, everything that you've done can come right back on your report. So you've just basically shot yourself in the foot because it's very time sensitive. Wow. So again, let's not try this at home. Let's not do this by ourselves. I think a lot of us think we're saving money, saving time by not going to the professionals. And maybe we weren't trained or raised that way to go to someone else who this is what they do as an expert. Well, I'm going to say, I wouldn't try this alone at home. Seek out professional help, like I'm saying counseling, right? Seek out professional help to get your credit house in order. We want your financial house to be, you know, squared away. We want you to be able to get those things that you want without something popping up that you didn't know about or you didn't know how to resolve. So we're going to wrap up this edition of This Needs to Be Said, and our elephant was finances today.
Change the world. Ooh. 